which is why I chose it. Courses in electronics and computer science are accredited by the Institution of Electrical Engineers and the British Computer Society. You have a lot of choice about how you study the subject. You can choose between electronic engineering, computer science and computer engineering. There are options like European studies and modern languages as well as many specialisms. It's possible to transfer between degrees if you need to. How is studying at university different from at school? So, definitely different from A-levels. At A-levels, you go along to the class, you do your work, possibly do the homework as well, and, and you know, you generally pass. Um, you come here, you go to the lectures, and you come out of the lectures and you think, uh, <laughs> don't understand that, and you have to go away and look at it afterwards. As well as lectures, we get problem sheets which we go through afterwards. And then you get tutorials as well with the tutor, where you can raise any extra problems. And in the first year, you get tutorial assignments. So, uh, yeah, it was different. <laughs> the computer science course teaches software engineering, with programming in various languages such as C. I didn't program any C before I came here. I had only touched in Pascal and I can quite happily program and see now. It really brings you along very quickly. Many final year student projects combine electronics and computer science. This is a, a one-handed keyboard. The idea with the keyboard is that you can connect it to a computer and operate it for full text input just with one hand so you can keep the remaining hand free to use a pointing device which is useful in graphical user interface programs and it maximizes the efficiency of working with the computer. It also helps with people with a disability so that if they've only got one functional arm they can actually use the keyboard. It's my final year project, the third year for electronics. To begin with, with the keyboard I had to spend about five to six weeks researching it in the library through CD-ROM searches and catalogue searches to find information on previous designs of keyboards. From there I then formulated my own ideas on the designs of keyboard layouts and tested them and benchmarked them and then I constructed the keyboard hardware so that it would interface to the computer. I'd always been interested in computers throughout my school years and so I chose to do an electronics course which still had some computer science based within it. Um, I chose Southampton because it was recognised to be one of the leading universities in electronics and I very much liked it when I saw around the place. My A-levels were maths and physics and computer science with a, an AS level of electronics. It's been fun. It's been very challenging at times. There were times during the first and the second year that there was a lot of work, but at the end of the day it was worthwhile. I'm hopefully going to come out with a good degree and I've got a nice, jo a nice job lined up as well. My final year project is all about mathematical modelling of plants and uh, what I do is like, I take a couple of equations and put them through my system which works under Windows and at the end I ray trace the final product to produce the plant which is on screen. You could change the colour, you can change the parameters, you can change the way they grow. It's actually a demonstration of artificial life trying to mathematically model the growth and evolution of plants. It's part of the wider area of research known as artificial life. The first year I spent in halls, I was in Glen Eyre Hall. It was one of the biggest halls here and it was really good. I lived in a flat with eight other English girls and I got to know English culture and <laughs> students here like to have fun. It's not very serious. <laughs> not everyone works hard. No. You really need to be in halls for the first year. You meet so many people. Not necessarily people in your course. I mean, I'm living with three of them next year, so and I'm, only one of them is on my course. After the first year, students usually move out to houses, but it's still, you know, most students live together in Portswood area of Southampton, and it's still quite good for social life, lots of clubs and pubs to go to. And of course, student life isn't just about studying. There are clubs and societies to cater for just about every conceivable interest. Activities to take part in, and people to meet who'll be your friends for life. 
Katerina Obradovich. When they finish their degrees, many of our students go on to postgraduate research. Some stay on at Southampton, some go to other universities. Um, I actually got a place, I got accepted at Northwestern University in Chicago, and uh, I'm going to do a master's and a PhD. It's uh, concerning human computer interaction. But they're really impressed with the uh, Southampton University. Um, I was surprised how much they knew about it, and they actually said that they're going to accept me after three years of BSc here. Although in America it lasts for four years, but they said it's equivalent because Southampton University is really good. Alan Roger Timms. Most of our graduates go on to work in the information technology industry. When I graduate, I'll be working for Philips Multimedia Research and working on networked games, which of course is the every student's dream, I guess. And so I'll be playing with all the nice expensive CD equipment. Final thoughts on the course at Southampton. If there's any problems, you can get it raised at the Staff Student Liaison Committee. As long as you've got your money sorted out, then things tend to be fairly stress-free. And there's a lot of help around here anyway. I enjoyed living in Hawes. It was good. Everybody needs to live in Hawes just to find friends. And I've still got, I'm still meeting friends of friends from my people that I knew in the first year. So, but I've, yeah, I enjoy it. But I also enjoy living in a house. The independence that that gives as well.